hello all welcome to my fifth um online complimentary makeup class for blushington <laughs> hi hi madam xyz um it's amazing to see so many people um joining us again thank you guys so much uh, my name is Lauren and I have been with Blushington for four years. Um, I've been a lead trainer and a senior makeup artist. And today I'm going to teach you guys some exciting Halloween makeup basics uh, that are good for everybody to know. So since our Blushington lounges are temporarily closed, as you may know, we've decided to go virtual and give everybody a little taste of Blushington at home uh, where you're comfortable in front of the camera. And um, we are available, just so you guys know, um, you can go to blushington.com if you're interested in more classes, group parties, um, skincare consultations, one-on-one -on -one, uh, lessons, private shopping, bridal. Um, we're still doing all of that, but this time from the comfort of your home. Home. So, um, just a couple of technicals. If you'd like to pin my video so that I'm the large one on your screen, um, you can do that now. It's it would be on your computer screen on the top right corner. You just hit pin. That way, I'll be the the big part of the screen, so you can see everything I'm doing. Um, any and all questions, if you type them in the chat box um, at the bottom, let's see, where is my chat box? Okay, yeah, if you type, if you, um, bottom center of your screen, it'll say chat. You can just ask your questions there. They'll pop up and I'll answer them as we go along. If you're on a phone, on iPhone, it's gonna be on the bottom right side where it says more. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> getting messages all the time. So, um, okay, so who's excited and ready to get started? First thing we're gonna do, sanitize our hands. Now, because I'm teaching you guys some detail work today, I already uh, arrived with the majority of my makeup on, so I do have my Herborean uh, BB and CC cream, as you may or may not have heard me talk about in the past. Um, we also have a good, oh, Madam XYZ purchased both and loves them. They are the best. So I have that. Of course, my can't live without um, Stila color correct palette. Uh, I just, this is covering every, <laughs> every sin on this face right now. One of my favorite tools. And um, I have my, my Galactic Matte Lip Paint, which is a really great, like, long wear. This is Allure. Allure looks good on everybody. Um, but I, my lips were a little dry, so I put my Jouer Enhancer on top of it. I always use this, um, but I have to say, I've been loving anytime I've gone out to eat, people are always surprised when I take my mask off that I have lipstick on, and they're like, we just gave up on lipstick um, because it would stick to the mask. So I've been telling people this, um, this Girlactic lip paint is actually really great because it's, it is a matte lip paint, but First of all, I, you can put it on kind of like a stain, like rub it in so that it's not like a thick layer of it. And then it just looks like a nice stained lip or you can wear it regularly, but it has nice color. It's not too drying and it stays on. It doesn't come off on the mask. So that is something to think about. So for Halloween, we're doing some basics that you can do at home. You, you can follow along with me if you'd like. Um, I encourage you guys to follow along, practice. Um, and a lot of these things you're gonna want to keep like practicing regularly, but once you get the hang of it, um, you'll be very happy, especially the lashes. 
because I have finally learned how to apply my own false strip lash and it's really uh, so much easier than all the years I was trying it a different way. So I'm excited to share that with you guys. But the first thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to get a bold eyeshadow color. Um, so first thing to do that, that is you want to use an eyeshadow primer. Now this one is amazing for, for this. This is an Anastasia um, mini eye primer. And everything that I'm using today, we also carry at Blushington. Uh, you can visit the blushington.com website. We're also gonna be posting in the chat button that will go to everyone, the links to these products. And you can use the code Lauren10 for 10% off um, any purchases. So, okay. The reason why I love this one is because it is so pigmented um, that it almost like whites out the skin. Now, if you have dark skin, you can absolutely still use this just because of the, the intensity of the staying power it has. All you do is you mix this down with a little bit of your own colored concealer and it works like nothing I've ever used before. So I'm gonna put it, you need the tiniest little amount. I'm putting like a pencil dot, well, pencil dot and a smear. And I'm gonna use, uh, all the brushes I'm using are the Bdellium bamboo, the pink bamboo brush brushes from the brush set that we carry at Blushington. So I'm using the 775 brush and this is like a synthetic um, kind of like a concealer brush. So I'm taking that little bit and got my mirror right here. Okay. Let's see if this works. <laughs> okay. So somebody just give me a little shout out if you can see what I'm doing well. Hold on, let's do that. Okay, so I am painting this on my whole eyelid. You want to make sure to get a really even application of this, and a little goes a very long way. <laughs> um, but again, if you do not put this on evenly, you will have uneven looking eyeshadow. So you really want to make sure that it's well blended and the place that we're gonna put this is all the way from the lash line up to the underneath of the eyebrow and all the way from that inner corner to the outer corner. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. So, does everybody out there generally use eyeshadow primer or you skip this step? It's an, e it's like, it's an easy, uh, an easy, yes, okay, Monica. Hey, Monica, this is awesome. I love seeing people come back again. Um, so yeah, it, you don't have to use eye primer every day, but when you're using bold colored shadows, it's really important to use the eye primer because first of all, the color is gonna come out um, more pigmented. So you're also gonna be wasting a lot less product by putting layer after layer after layer because you don't really need all of those layers when you have a primer. The other thing is, if you've ever uh, really played with some very fabulous pigmented palettes, you'll know that um, sometimes your eyelids can get stained from certain colors. So this also prevents that from happening. But so once we have that on, then I am going to, oh, I got a little of my eyebrows, that's okay. Not the end of the world. So now um, I'm gonna take, 
my Norvina palette from Anastasia. This palette is very exciting. <laughs> now I use all of the um, neutral colors for like my everyday makeup. And I'm actually gonna use some brighter colors to show you some Halloween looks. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually take this bright color. Uh, it's like a bright gold, champagne gold uh, shimmer. And I'm gonna take that with the amazing, wonderful brush that it comes with on the fluffy side. And I'm going to put some And you can see, you see that, sh that, um, that glow already. That's why I'm saying when you use the primer, you don't have to use um, as much product. Just one little swipe and it's like a really, a really bright gold kind of glow. So again, when you're trying to go more bold, um, you know, there's so many different fun Halloween like makeup looks. And this year, of course, um, for anybody that will be celebrating Halloween outside of your home, you know, uh, many of us are going to be wearing masks. So this year, it's all about the eyes. So I'm just going to do a little transition color. Uh, I'm going to do this color eccentric, and I'm using that same side of the brush. And this I'm just going to put right in the crease. Now, normally, when I teach, um, a lot of times people ask me, like, how come I normally always set the primer? Because that's when you want, like, a subtle, blended-looking makeup. But obviously, this, today, we're doing bold. So it's okay, then to go directly on top of the primer. But in general, like uh, on a general basis, you really wanna try to, um, to keep the primer um, powdered before you start applying shadow. So again, as I've told you guys before, the best blending motions are just back and forth like a windshield wiper. Okay, now it's about to get fun. I am actually going to use, and I have to thank uh, Joseph Simpson of Blushington because he taught me this trick and it's really cool. So back to that matte lip paint, I'm using one in a bright, um, almost like a burgundy-ish red color. It's called Seductive. And I'm gonna put this on my eyelids and blend it and it looks really cool. So the sanitary way to do this is you can use a palette, you can use um, a cotton swab. I actually have like a little, you know, um, like a craft stick and I'm gonna put some on both sides of the stick. Okay, there we go. So now I'm going to put some right in the center there. I'm going to use my ring. Actually, no, I'll use my uh, middle finger and I'm going to blend this out. And this is a really great way to get like some bright color without it um, ending up shedding all over your skin. Now I'm gonna use my pinky and I'm just gonna smear along the top to kind of blend that. And remember, I always tell people, don't be afraid of making a little mess. You have to think of this as like we're baking a cake and we're gonna get a little messy, and then we'll all clean it up. So don't worry about any messes, okay? Okay, so we have that. Very fun. And then I'm gonna do it on that eye. Same thing. 
when you are working with your hands or your fingers, it's always really good to keep some baby wipes nearby. And you can do this with any, any kind of lip color, um, but it's really fun to do with the long wear. But again, don't try it without primer or you will not be thrilled with how it will stain your skin. <laughs> yes, it is a fun bloody mess. And <laughs> somebody just said it was a fun bloody mess. Yeah, and absolutely. And if you want to make like streaks of like, like blood tears coming down. I mean, some people get really gruesome on Halloween. Some people get more glam. Um, I tend to get, get kind of Disney. <laughs> so it's like whatever, whatever um, floats your boat. So now I'm just taking some of that off with a wipe. Okay. And let's see. So now to clean that up, I'm just going to take a cotton swab. I love the pointy ones and some embryo lease. This is a makeup artist secret, okay? This is a moisturizer that you can also use to remove makeup and it's very non-irritating. So I'm just putting it a little bit there, a little bit there. But again, if you want like a more avant-garde look, don't worry about, uh, than cleaning it up as much. But as you can see, uh, embryo lease just does the best job. And again, you can shape this however you like. Um, okay. So, yeah, and, and like I said, don't be afraid to get a little messy. It's fun, you know. Um, sometimes I see people panic when when it starts getting messy, and I'm I remind them we'd be getting messy if we were baking or if we were painting. So don't be too scared. Okay, same thing right there. Anywhere that you get it that you want to clean it up, you just do that uh, now. If you don't have embryo lease at home, I do recommend that you get it, but you can also use um, micellar water on a cotton swab. And we have a great one at Blushington as well, another French brand. This is embryo lease French. That one is Bioderma. And that one is, um, that one is really great, and it's especially great if you are a fall a faux lash wearer and you like to take uh, like you'll you'll reuse lashes. Um, what you can do is use that on a cotton swab to take the glue off, um, so that you can reuse the strip. Okay, so again, not perfect, but that's okay because this is fun. Now I'm going back to my Norvina palette and I'm gonna teach you when you wanna use shimmer. So I'm using the Celestial Shimmer, it's a bright purple. Now to get the most out of shimmer, you either wanna use a wet brush or I'm again going to use my fingers. So you just stamp it in and then you just want to stamp it on top. So that you get that really intense color. And you can do this, of course, with any colors, any shimmers that you like. Okay. <laughs> Are we enjoying this or do I look too wild and crazy? I'm really just trying to teach like the techniques so that you guys know how you can use products like this. Um, I'm gonna take this brush again and go back 
and just give it a nice blending dust. Yes, Monica's saying punk rock. You're right. It is very punk rock. And I will be teaching my final class next Wednesday, which will also be Halloween. So if you want, at the end, um, we'll post the registration link for that. But that's going to be really fun. Um, and that's going to be similar, but it's going to be like a euphoria glitter, um, glitter gems kind of look. So, and it's a little punk rock, I would say. So stay tuned for that. Okay. So just a little blending. But you can see how I achieved like bold eyeshadow colors. Um, my two honorable mentions for this are the Stila. Um, this is the Shimmer and Glow liquid eyeshadow. And this one is the Glitter and Glow liquid eyeshadow. They come in a bunch of different colors, um, but the glitter is pretty cool because, well, they're both cool. They come with a little applicator and you can just kind of pat it on and get some glitter that stays. Okay. And yeah, because anybody that's tried working with glitter knows I'm sure the frustration of it ending up all over you where you weren't trying to put it. And then the liquid, um, I'm using starlight in the liquid color. Now this I usually will use with a little brush. This is, oh, I think it's 742. Numbers rubbed off a little bit. So this one I'm going to put right in that inner corner. For just a bright little pop. Okay. And again, remember it's art and nobody said you can't do finger painting in this art uh, realm. So don't be afraid to use your fingers, blend, play and have fun. Okay, so now we've got some bold uh, eye color. So now what I wanna do is I want to clean all of this up right so that i can move on now if you're doing really bold eye makeup i often will recommend to start with um start with the eye makeup and then move to the rest of your face that way you are able to clean it up and then you can do the rest of your skin so i didn't do that because I was going to be on TV <laughs> or on film. So instead, um, I have to kind of go back and fix up the makeup that I just removed. So that will just save you a step. And pro tip, I've got a Blushington pro tip. If you are using glitter and it gets other places and then you are trying to wipe it off, and it's just not coming off. This is how the pros take it off. Scotch tape, you just take a little bit and then just press it and then peel it off. And it will leave your makeup, but it'll take off. Let's see, I've got a glitter right there. It'll take off the glitter and it's very gentle to the skin. So, of course, Halloween is a time that most of us don't mind being a little covered in glitter. But, um, okay. So now, of course, I have to clean up that little under eye area. And do that really fast with my CC cream. Okay. Taking just a little, warming it up, changes color. And I'm just gonna 
pat that on. And of course, later I would probably add a little color correction, but this is not about me looking glam and amazing. This is about me teaching these important techniques. Okay, so that part being done, I'm going to show you how to stick with that same eyeshadow palette that we just used and do a little bit of um, highlighter on your cheeks. Now, highlighter is a really fun product. A lot of young people play with it and use it all the time. Um, if you're like me and you don't use it that often, Halloween is a really fun time to play with it. So, I am going to actually take, I'm gonna use the same brush that was from the, um, actually, no, you know what? I'm gonna use my fan brush, my Bedellium fan brush. And I'm gonna use this color, this pink shimmery color, Wild Child. Just gonna get some of that on there. Now, when you do a uh, highlighter, you definitely want to avoid using a big, heavy brush or a very dense brush. I'm gonna put it right on the top of the cheekbone. Yeah, and this has a little bit of a glitter to it. But can you see that? It, it's, a, it's a pink. Now, you can play with all different colors depending on what kind of, um, look you're going for. I love the pink because it mimics the pink of blush, so it's very kind of flattering on everybody. Um, I can show you on the other side, I'll use that same color that I used on the top um, under my brow. That is Dreamer, that's this color. And you just want to really keep it on the top part of the cheekbone. If you want, you can put a little bit on the cheek, the apple of the cheek. Some people will go crazy and put it all over and there's no rule saying that you can't do that. Um, put a little bit on your nose. me it always looks silly on my nose but um but some people swear by it but one place that is actually really nice is to put it right like almost like a little outline of your cupid's bow and it just gives you a little little lift a little shimmer on the top of the lid. So let's just do one more little touch under here. Okay. So now that we have that done, um, we're going to go to winged liner. Now this is something that you don't have to be afraid of. In fact, I'm going to teach you the easiest way to do it. Um, my choice for this is to use the um, Stila Waterproof Gel Eyeliner. It's a black smudge pot, and I'm using it with a tiny um, angled brush, the one that comes in the set. So now the best way to do this is, and always will be, you want to look straight ahead into your mirror, with your eyebrows relaxed and your eyes open, but natural, so that you can see what a wing will look like when you're looking straight ahead, okay? So when I'm looking straight ahead, what I want is for the wing to mimic the direction that the underneath of my eye goes in if it was to go up and out this way, okay? 
So the same, same direction. So this is a way to get it flattering on everyone um, and to get it to look correct on your face, no matter what your face shape or your eye shape is. So for some people, that's going to be a more straight across. Some people, it's going to be um, a higher. Some people, it's going to be more angled. Um, the way to do this is you're going to take some of this color. It's a little black gel pot. So you're going to get it on the edge of the brush, if you can see that. Okay. Now, while you're looking straight ahead in the mirror, eyebrows relaxed, eyes open. Again, what I want to do is create a continuing line of the underneath of my um, eye. So that bottom lash line, what I'm gonna do is take the brush and I'm gonna hold it toward my face, but with the longer edge, see the longer edge on this side, that's going to be facing down. That way it's, it really mimics the angle of my face. And I'm just placing it just at the very edge of that, the outer corner of my eye and I'm just gonna give it a little, just a little wiggle, okay? So, and it's exactly as if that underneath of my um, eye just grew upward a little bit, okay? Everybody can see that? So, I'm gonna pull it down just a little bit. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is make a little isosceles triangle. So an isosceles triangle, it's longer on one side, shorter on one side, and equal angle along the bottom. Okay, so I'm taking my brush and I'm, keep, I'm doing this with my eye open because the shape that I wanna perfect is what it looks like with my eye open, not with my eye closed. That really isn't gonna matter um, unless I'm doing a photo shoot where I'm just looking down, reading a book. But for the most part, I'm going to be looking at people and I want to look great when they're looking at me. So you just wanna kind of pull that in. Then you have that little triangle. Now you fill in that little triangle, okay? And you can take a little more product if you want. Now you can just attach the triangle to the lash line by pulling it across. And you can pull it, you can just do it a little bit or you can pull it all the way in. It all depends on the style, the look that you like. Um, this is really fun if you're doing kind of like a, um, 1950s um, and you want just a tiny little wedge. Now, if you want something greater, you just go right back in. Sorry, you just go right back in, right from that little corner and just pull it out. And again, you can use um, cotton swabs to clean it up if you want or make it sharper. So that's how you would do it with this kind of a product. Now on the other eye, I'm gonna teach you really fast how to do it with a liquid liner because some people um, do prefer to work with a liquid liner. So I am just going to just kind of tighten up that little point. And then down here, I never like to leave it as a harsh line. So I always just like to take right where it comes to. 
um, and then just kind of diffuse it in. And I'm telling you, cotton swabs, a great, inexpensive, sanitary, easy way to do um, detailed blending. So now I'm gonna show you, I'm using the, um, this Stila Stay All Day Waterproof. I am using brown <laughs> because um, I ran out of my black, but you'll get the idea. So now some people, right, if you don't have the smudge pot, you would just have this. And what you wanna do is, again, just like we did with the brush, you're just gonna kind of line this up with the underneath of your eye. And this time you're going to just stamp it stamp it on. So it's actually, it's pretty easy. I just, I always like working the other way better, <laughs> but this is not actually that bad. So then from that point, you're gonna again, draw that little triangle. Okay, and then fill that in. And remember, this takes a little practice, but this, this is how I learned how to do it on myself. And it's really helped me to learn to make that little triangle. And then once you have that, you can kind of close your eye and I hope you can see what I'm doing <laughs> and just pull it across. And you can make it as thick or as thin as you want. I think that the pen, in a way, may be a slightly easier to apply, but also less forgiving, um, and a little harder to fix it if it's not perfect. And sometimes when I'm doing like a black winged eyeliner, I want it to look a little more perfect. Um, because it's so bold, but there, and that's like, if you want to pull it out, if you want to pull it down, do that. But so that's the basic way to do the winged liner. Don't be afraid if you mess up. Just get out the uh, cotton swabs and the embryo lease or the bioderma and you'll be able to fix it easily. Um, everybody makes mistakes with their makeup, everybody. So now I'm gonna teach you guys one of the most fun and exciting parts of all makeup, but especially Halloween makeup. And um, yeah, it's like an essential for Halloween makeup. So I'm gonna teach you how to put on faux lashes. Do we have any faux lash wearers? I see you, okay, now I'm seeing everybody. I see Monica, Michelle, <laughs> I see Gigi. Gigi, I love your makeup. Hi, Zara, this is amazing. Janet, Hannah. Malia, Michelle, Lindsay, Patricia, Liz, Laura. Wow, there's so many people. Madam XYZ. <laughs> Love it. Adi, Heather, Regina, Sunita. Oh my gosh, it's so nice to see you guys. Wow, okay. Now that I'm looking like this, I can see myself actually much larger. <laughs> I was working on a tiny little thumbnail on an iPhone. So that's why I'm not really facing the phone as much. I've been looking in my mirror. Okay, so the faux lash. There are many faux lashes. There are many shapes and sizes, and it all depends on the shape of your eyes. Um, that like what is the right shape and size is the kind of question that Either you find out from experimenting with a whole lot of them, or if you like do an appointment with a professional artist, they can give you an idea. Um, 
I know that two of the most popular ones we have at Blushington, and we have them because they're the most popular lashes. We have um, Ardell Baby Demi Wispies. These are like volumizing. It'll give you some, um, some heft to your lashes, some thickness, but they're very, very subtle. Like you would never know that somebody had these on. Then we have the wispies, and we have those in a foaming wispies all the way. Yeah, the wisp. <laughs> Monica, you're so funny. Yeah, wispies are like wispies are drama. Now I'm actually using a demi wispy because I like a little bit longer on the end and shorter in the front. So. I'm going to use that and I'm going to show you guys today the technique that I've discovered really works <laughs> and, and it works and it's, it's not messy and horrible. Um, okay. So anyway, the first thing that you want to do is grab a clean pair of tweezers and then you want to take the lashes off from the edge. So right at the top of the band, you can see that. So then I like to do that little bendy, kind of like bend it this way, just to get it a little bit pliable. Okay, so I'm putting that down. Now sometimes, you know, you always want to kind of hold it up first and see if it needs to be trimmed. If you do need to trim it, you want to trim it from the outer corner before you put it on. And then again, just check. If they're too long on the ends or if they go too far down, it's going to give your eyes the look of a droop. And you want to have them looking lifted. And it's the same if they go too far in. So gen the general rule of thumb is that you want them to go in as far as where your own lashes start kind of coming up and out, like right there would be the spot. So I'm not gonna put them starting here. I'm gonna put them starting about here. And then you wanna get them to the end, but you don't want them to have a down slope. So if you have down sloping eyes, you can either cut them a little bit shorter or you can kind of pull it up just a little bit at the very end. And also sometimes um, I've had customers complain about this before. So I've explained to them that sometimes there's a little, let's see if you can see this. Sometimes there's a little extra um, band at each end. You definitely want to trim that off. And I'm just using little, um, that's what you would do with little like uh, eyelash, uh, yeah, lash scissors, brow scissors. So you just snip that extra little bit of band because that can get pokey in the eye. Okay, so did my little wiggle. Now some people like to brush them while they're on, still in the dish. You can do that if you want with a spoolie. Um, that will really like fan them out and fluff them. So uh, it's hard for me to hold this up that way and show you without them falling. But um, yeah, so you can brush them if you'd like. It's not a requirement. So now I'm using Duo Lash Glue. I'm using the, um, the Strip Lash Adhesive in Dark. Now, the one that we have currently at Blushington is actually going to be the easiest to do this method with um, because those one, that one is latex free and it has a little uh, wand attached to it. So it doesn't go on like this, which comes squeezes out of the tube. That actually uses a little wand. So let me backtrack for a sec. First thing is to curl your lashes. So unless you have very curly lashes and you don't need to. Some people never do. Got my Kevin Aquan lash curler. 
but it really helps for them to blend really nicely with your own lashes. And then if your lashes have trouble like holding the curl, what um, I recommend sometimes to people is you can take uh, your mascara and just do one like very light coat. So I'm using my favorite ever. This is the Anastasia Lash Brag. And I'm not kidding. It's my favorite ever. I have never been able to find a mascara that does like exactly what I want. And this, it's just, I, I can't say enough about it. It's the best mascara I've ever used. Okay. And I'm not like trying new mascara every month or two kind of person, but this is the best one I've ever used. Okay, so once you have that part done, now that's gonna help the lashes sit more comfortably. It's also gonna make them look better on your face. So here's the fun technique part. So I'm gonna take some of this lash glue and I prefer the dark, the dark adhesive to the clear. Some people love the clear. I'm not a clear person, I like the dark. So I'm taking, I'm gonna put a small curl size amount on the back of my hand. And I'm taking a long handled, long handled angle brush. This is actually the brow gal brush that goes with some of our eyebrow um, products and it's just so so thin and easy so this is what i've discovered and it's changed my life instead of applying this to the lash and then trying to put a lash that has wet black glue onto my eye without getting it anywhere i discovered if you just put this on like eyeliner the glue and then just <laughs> Monica's like, oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> hello. <laughs> and then you just drop the lash on. It's amazing. So I'm going to take this. Okay. Now I have to really look closely in my little mirror for this part. So I hope you can see this. So with my eye open, I'm just. Let's see. You want to do one eye at a time. So I'm just, I'm literally just painting this on. It glides on like nothing. And that's it, just painted it on. Now I'm gonna take my lash, oop, that's meant for that eye. And on my tweezer, kind of taking it from the center and I'm holding it upside down. And I'm just gonna, instead of putting it on this way, if you hold it upside down, you can get it right where you want it. And you won't feel it because it'll have that uplifted curl. And then I usually will turn this and use the other end. just to kind of squish them down. Now, some people like to pinch them. I usually kind of pushing them, pushing, pushing, pushing them into my lash line really well so that they stay. And if you've ever worn lashes before, you know that the most important um, places to make sure they're really well glued are both ends. I, I, this could not have been easier <laughs> and I never knew I could do it like this before. Um, it's all just like playing and experimenting. So you wanna let those dry a little bit. And so I'm gonna do the other eye. So again, I'm taking this brush, this angled, brow gal brush, getting the glue on the tip of the brush. And of course, I'm like turning my elbow this way and doing my whole lean as we all do. And with my eye open, I'm just lightly 
just tapping this at the lash line. And you don't have to be a, an eyeliner master to get this. Doesn't have to be a perfect line straight across. You need to get the glue where the glue needs to go. That's really it. So now I'm taking these again with the tweezer from the middle, pull them upside down and just kind of anchor it. See how I'm making sure that the inside of the lash doesn't go in any further than where my lashes are. And sometimes you have to kind of pick the end up and just drop it down again to make sure it's really in the right spot. Then just turn this upside down. Okay, and let's see, we lost our spot there. So I cannot even tell you that for years, I was the one makeup artist that, because I didn't grow up wearing heavy makeup. I learned how to put lashes on other people, but not on myself. And I was that one makeup artist that just could not get strip lashes on my own face. Everybody thought it was nuts, but now I feel like a whole new sense of freedom that I can wear a strip lash. So, and you can too. And now if you want, you can go back over the top with that, um, that black eyeliner. Sometimes what I like to do is just take a little bit more on my um, brush and I just like to kind of pull it, pull the color to this inner part and right to where that, right to where that inner um, part of the lash starts so that it doesn't look like I have this really thick lash line right up until my lashes start. So, that's another little kind of trick you can do. Some people like to do to tight line from underneath and do that as well. And again, for tight lining, I thank you. Thank you, Madam XYZ, for tight lining. Again, the brush, it's so easy with this, um, this gel liner and it won't tear off all over your face. So, that is pretty much it. The last little thing, and I just, just a little honorable mention. If you want for Halloween, because we're playing with lashes, you can do all kinds of fun things. This is a baby Demi. I, I don't know where the other one is, went, but it, the other one was on this side, but you, I painted it. You can paint these. Um, let's see, I don't know if you can really see but it's like a gold glitter. Now, if you wanna do like white ones for like a, an angel or a fairy, all you do again is take that eye primer, which comes out so pigmented, so white. So you just take that eye primer and just paint it. You can just paint it right on. And then um, once that dries, I actually used that liquid eyeshadow and then when that dried I used a little bit of the glitter. It's a fun little project. It's a fun project for like a crafty kind of thing for kids. Um, okay so the last thing that I'm going to teach you is how to apply embellishments. Um, so okay sorry I'm just making sure these are all set. Oh, thank you, Monica. I'm sorry. I know we went a little bit over time because uh, I, I had some major technical issues, but it was great to see you it, come back and sign up for the next one. We're going to do a really fun euphoria look. Yes. All right. Mm, thank you. Bye. Um, okay. So this last little bit, 
is really simple. We're going to use embellishments, whatever you like. <laughs> Thanks, blushing Tim. Any kind of embellishment that you like, you can use uh, sewing things that are left over, sequins, uh, gems, you know, all, there's all kinds of things you can use. But basically, you want to use a uh, clear, this is when you can use clear, um, sorry, <laughs> I just had to clean that. This is when you can use a clear lash adhesive. So this is also our Dell, it's the lash tight, uh, it's the lash, ugh, lash grip, clear eyelash adhesive. We do not have this at Blushington, but you can get it pretty much um, any like specialty store. So I'm putting a little dot of this. Now the reason why we're using clear is because it's gonna dry clear and that's what we really want. So I have some little sequin payettes left over from a sewing project. So I'm holding it with the um, tweezer and just going to get a little bit of that glue on. And let's see, I'll put, put one right there. And then you just kind of pat it on. And yes, I have, yes, I do have nail polish at the end of this. So I know that it's mine. Uh, that's a, being a makeup artist working on set with other people. <laughs> so that's how you glue that on. Now this is super lightweight, so I don't really have to do anything to get it to stay. Um, but it all depends on the weight of what you're using. If you're using like a Swarovski crystal, for example, that's gonna be a little bit heavier weight. So I did the same thing. Just dipped it in the glue, got a little, very thin amount on the back, and just sticking it on and patting it down. And then you wanna just leave it and let it dry. Don't worry if you see white because that will dry clear. Um, so again, and even I still, oh, Vaseline works. I never knew, I see if you're using something a little heavier, it, sometimes it's helpful if you take a cotton swab and just use a little, um, a little alcohol really on the spot where you're about to apply it. And then if it's heavy, like if it's Swarovski crystals, you wanna just add the glue, but then you wanna hold it in place as it dries so that it doesn't start to move. Um, that can happen sometimes with the heavier ones. I also have these. Now I, even if I'm using something, let's see if you can see that. These are like little glittery, um, tiny little pink gems so even if and they're stickers they stick um they're actual stone but they stick but even if they have an adhesive already i still always add a little bit of the glue and give it a second to get a little bit tacky and then you can just let's see i'll put one here Just stick that on. And there are all kinds of cool things you can do. Some people will actually um, stick them on all along their lash line. You can also do that underneath. You can do it under your eyebrows, over your eyebrows. You can do a whole look like around this way. Um, but remember the main thing this year with Halloween is that it is going to be a lot about the eyes since we are living in a masked world right now. So I'm just doing that last one. And just going to place it. And then just press it. And that would be the Halloween makeup basics. Not the most perfect, I spent hours doing it for me, but 
this, these are the techniques. So I just want to encourage everybody to try, practice, and play. Um, email info at Blushington if you want any custom Halloween classes. Myself and several colleagues are all available, and this is our favorite time of the year as makeup artists. So, um, yes, yeah, so let us know if you want to do custom classes, and that's men, women, children. Um, follow us on Instagram at Blushington. Follow me on Instagram at Lauren Sarah Makeup Artist. Um, it's just the same way that my name is spelled in my little box. Um, so it's at Lauren Sarah Makeup Artist. Then we're at Blushington. Use that 10% off code on blushington.com. Um, it is, uh, we have all kinds of products, great things like so pillowcases and uh, bath soak and just a lot of great things, essentials, but also great gifts. Um, and, and sign up for my next class because that's going to be a really fun um, look. And now that you know the basics, you're all set for the next step. Michelle, I want to say thank you for doing your makeup along with me. You look amazing. And let's say, yeah, this has just been a great class. Thanks again, all of you so much. And thanks for bearing with me. And um, I hope you guys have a great day. I hope this was helpful. <laughs> all right. Bye, guys. When's the next one? I'm sorry. Oh, oh sure. The next one is going to be next Wednesday, same time. Okay, perfect. Okay. And I think, are they, let me see it if Flushington is posting the, um, oh, yay, it is already registered. Um, yeah, so you can just uh, go on the, it'll be the same way that you registered for this one, and it's next week. There it is. The, okay. the registration link is on there. Okay, cool. All right, thank you. Okay, great. Thanks. Nice to see you. Bye, Bye. guys.